Welcome to the Superstar Communicator Podcast. My name is Susan Heaton Wright, a leading impact speaking and communications expert. My aim is to show you how to make an impact so you will be heard, listened to, and respected for career success. Listen weekly to the podcast and go to our website, superstarcommunicator.com. Hello, everybody. This is Susan Heaton Wright from Superstar Communicator. I am really, really excited. You know what I'm like, everybody. I get very excited when I've got um, somebody great on the other end of the internet. And today is no exception. And this gentleman is somebody that I admire so much. And he's somebody that I aspire to be. And his whole thing is about empowering people to be the best they can be and also he is such a supportive individual so welcome david heiner thank you very much can you introduce me everywhere that was yep. awesome thank you <laughs> very kind of you lovely to be here susan oh tell the audience all about what you do because you will do it much better than me bless you well i'm a researcher and a professional speaker I've interviewed over the last 22 years, 258 top achieving men and women from all over the world, every walk of life, from neuroscientists through to charity fundraising workers, through to multimillionaires, explorers, scientists, academics, you get the idea. And uh, I found out how they think and behave in ways that make them so much more effective than the rest of us. Mm -hmm. so, I teach people about goal setting, memory skills, purpose, presentation skills. And all I do, I only ever share what I've learned from my research. I don't read a book and deliver. And well, the, oops. <laughs> I, so I was just going to add, and over 20 years as a speaker, I've, I've just, last month, spoken to one million people. Wow. Oh, congratulations. That's incredible. And I bet online... You're reaching even more people, aren't you? Well, that, that's the beauty of technology, isn't it? I mean, with, with video courses, with the learning platforms, I mean, I think I've got, I think I've got five or six video courses and there's 32,000 students on them that I never, ever would have reached without technology. So I'm in awe of it. Absolutely. This is creating opportunities, isn't it? And, and making a difference, just as importantly. Yes. I mean, it's helping us as entrepreneurs but yeah. it, you know, the reason we do our job is to make a difference, create an impact. Definitely. And, and we're from, we know each other from the Professional Speaking Association, which is a brilliant organisation. And there are some great people within the community. Um, but for a number of people, they, what they do has disappeared because we're now all virtual. Yeah. So just reaching out to people who are just in limbo that are listening here, perhaps they're all of a sudden they're working from home and they've never done that. What would your tip be there? Thanks for asking that because I'm very passionate about this because there's lots of people getting sucked into the, I'll just have a webinar and a coffee with my friends and they're doing eight calls a day. This time, if we're stuck at home doing nothing, is an opportunity to change our life and or our business or our family or our organization. When everyone else is putting their feet up, binge watching Netflix box set, what we need to do is skill up. Identify the thing that's missing personally in your hobbies, your interests, your relationships or your business and go after it like a ninja. Get that qualification, learn that new software, get that new skill that'll take you from there to there so that when we come out of it, we're way ahead of the game. Absolutely. And I just get the impression that you and I are slightly ahead of the game. <laughs> you mean you mean we're a bit bit rhino? That's oh, we're mean. a bit <laughs> rhino. Yeah. <laughs> Do explain to the audience what being <laughs> rhino is, because they're going to think, oh, my God, what's going on here? Well, one, one of the people I interviewed was a, a, a global best-selling author called Scott Alexander. And he wrote a book that I'll be honest with you. I initially, to my shame, dismissed as fluffy woolly nonsense. Uh, but when I interview top achievers, as a throwaway question, I ask, is there a book that's a game changer? Not, oh, that's a nice book, but changed you. 
and above any biography, autobiography, business strategy or acumen book I've ever heard, heard or come across them with them answering, Rhinoceros Success by Scott Alexander is the most commonly quoted book. So I swallowed my pride, read the book, and I have to say, it's a thin book, large print pictures, of cows and rhino. It's the kind of book that, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> However, I have never been so motivated by the written word as I was, and I, I now get it. So I tracked him down, interviewed him, and he's this crazy Californian guy with like really out there opinions. But his work was actually reinforced by some of the psychoanalysts that I've interviewed later on, positive psychologists. What he says is, about 3% of the population behave like rhinos. They see what they want, they go for it. The rest of us are guilty most of the time of behaving like cows. <laughs> we, we hang around in a herd with people just like us so we don't stand out, feel awkward, feel safe. And we look out and dream of what's over the fence. But we're too afraid to have a go in case our peers don't like us. So we stay and that procrastinating circle of doom of do what you've always done, get what you've always got. Moo, milky, milky. And the problem is, is that 97% of us end up with regrets. 3% of us go rhino and achieve more. The good news is that any of us can go rhino and all we've got to do, and this is where we've got to be real at an emotional level, 90%, 97% of the time, we can be rhino. We've got to allow the reality of the fact that 3% of the time, we have cow days. You know, it's, it's, not about, it's not about positive thinking. It's about positive doing. Because you know, right now on the other side of that curtain, I've got a very live and real care situation with quite serious stuff going on back there there's some real cow stuff happening with my family the other side of that curtain. So I've got cow stuff going on. I'm choosing rhino today. We can choose. And that's the thing we can choose. Is that, you know, this is incredible. And um, presumably you get in the rhino zone. Yeah. Um, because I can see that in myself, you know, this last few weeks up head down. I can see and him. Then, yeah. And everyone <laughs> head down. <laughs> 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 People that are listening to this will see that I've adopted this rhino. <laughs> oh, um, but every so often I think, oh my goodness, um, nobody's liking what I've done from the PSA or things like that, you know, my community. But actually, I need to be in the rhino zone. We, we need to, yeah, we need, we need to stop worrying about people's opinions who don't pay our bills. Yes. We, we need to serve those who we need to serve and focus on serving them, go rhino for them. Our, our peers, they're a wonderful, wonderful, as you said, wonderful group of people, but they're not necessarily putting food on our table a lot. No, so we, we must free up the need for acceptance from people who are not putting food on our child's table. And we need to focus on, focus on serving those who need it. So in other words, for people that are listening to this and in the podcast, um, obviously, we need to listen to our bosses and our client, but um, and our colleagues. But essentially, it's got to be people that pay us. So our clients, um, obviously, our bosses. If we're in employment, but if you're an entrepreneur like like David and me, we've got to think about our customer and how we can help them. Absolute service first. Service first. Brilliant. I'm sure that all of your heads are buzzing as much as my head is buzzing in this rhino position just now. I think I might put this on as a video, then you'll see what's <laughs> going on here. Um, so three top tips. I normally ask three top tips, rhino tips, um, for speaking and communication, presumably to your target um, client. Right. Anyone who needs to give a presentation, be it just a one-off talk in public at a church or a school or a fete, right up to the chief executive or a professional speaker, trainer, facilitator. My top three tips would be, first of all, have a reason why you must get that message across. That reason, the reason to present must be bigger than your fear of failure and catastrophe because frequently people say oh it's my nerves they get the better of me and that's because they're focusing on them 
if we just need to totally switch it, I don't know, you're, you're a big fan of this stuff. You, you <laughs> Absolutely, it's all about them. Yeah, it should be all me. about them. It goes back to what we were saying earlier, serve the people, yeah. serve them. And we're not serving them if we're going, oh, please like me, make me feel significant. And we don't relax until we see some poor woman on the front row or poor bloke at the back row who's smiling at us and we go, right, that's it, I'm presenting to you <laughs> until I feel comfortable. No, for, so rule number one is have a reason why you must share this information. Have, have a purpose for it. Number two is show them that you mean it. Now, some people say to me, David, you're very different when you're not presenting than you are, you know, when I meet you for a coffee. Like, well, thank goodness for that. Um, the thing is that my reason why is that I am obsessed about sharing that everyone should set massive goals and not smart goals. Obsessed with it. So if I, if I was to say to you, Susan, if you, if you were my audience, I'll go, I'm very passionate that people should set massive goals. You know, whew, out of there. So you, everything has got to show the people that you mean it. You've, you've got to show it with your face, your eyes, your voice, your tonality, your gesture, your body language. You know, I want everyone to stop setting smart goals, set massive goals. You've got to convince people. So you can probably hear my son say, you've got to convince people. You've got to convince people. So number one is have a why. Number two is show them. Number, th number three, I can't count myself, is, is have knockout content be contrary switch the the norm of convention uh, but have content that are going to make people do something a call to action we as presenters should not seek applause and a happy tick sheet on an evaluation form what we should do is be courageous enough to say don't score me now three weeks from now go and ask your delegates what did you do that is how we should be measured, I think. So those are my three top tips. Oh, that's superb. And lots of things for people to go away and ponder about because this is turning a lot of conventional thought about this on its head. Yeah. Especially what I do about goal setting because everyone's taught SMART goals and yet no one's, no one's ever bothered to find out who invented the acronym SMART. And if they bothered, they'd find out that that guy worked on multi-billion dollar water utility projects and he's misquoted. He has never once said your goal should be smart. He actually said when working on really big projects, the steps to your goal should be smart. That's different. That's a little bit different, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm aware that, you know, things are um, progressing backstage. Do you want to share? <laughs> do you want to share um, how people can contact you? Sure. Um, I'll be honest, if they spell my name right, I'm over the internet like a rash. So if they just put in David Heiner, H-Y-N-E-R, um, they can follow me on YouTube, LinkedIn, my website, or if they want video courses, they can go to udemy.com, U-D-E-M-Y.com, put my name in, you'll find me. Brilliant. And I can put that in the information about this particular call. Of course. Have you got anything else to say? The rhinos t have made an appearance. <laughs> <laughs> As of this end. Oh, the, the last thing I would say is stop trying to be a positive thinker. Accept that we're in tough times. We're all allowed 3% of cow days. But focus on what you want and then start being a positive doer, not a positive talker and thinker. And there are plenty of those, aren't there? Still. Yep. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, David. It's been a delight. I'm really, really grateful. I'm going to put this out this week because I want, you know, this is the ideal time to be sharing this sort of content rather yeah. than thinking, oh, this has got to be, you know, um, evergreen. I'm, I'm wanting to serve people now. Oh, God bless you for doing that. That's, it's the right thing, mate. Thank you so much, David. Thank you. You have been listening to the Superstar Communicator podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and review the podcast on iTunes and on apps. Please contact us if you want to discuss any topic, could suggest a topic for us to include, or a guest who could come onto the podcast. Go to superstarcommunicator.com.